All right, guys, let's take a look at the five worst practices people with vipers do. All right, guys, so the first and the biggest mistake people often make, especially with younger vipers, is putting them on display far too early. So, look at this guy, he's all concentrated on me, ready to go. By the way, this is a Vogel's Viper male. Ain't that an incredibly beautiful animal? So, as I was saying, people put vipers on display far, far, far too early. And the reason that they actually do that is because obviously vipers make amazing display, but it stresses them out too freaking much. So, as I was saying, putting them on display too early does stress them out. It does make them less reluctant to eat because they're in an open environment, they're do, they do not feel secure whatsoever, and that oftentimes leads to a high mortality rate in arboreal vipers. So when actually can you put arboreal vipers on display? Well, basically when they're the size of this Vogel's female. So that would be at a year, year and a half, or almost two years old, because then they're already hardier captive animals. So unfortunately, there are some animals, however, that do not do good on display ever for the entire duration of their life. For example, the Schlegeli female. Now it's important for you as a keeper to identify which of your animals actually do okay with being seen often and what animals do absolutely horrible with being seen often. Now she, for example, is a world-class example of an animal that does not like to be seen often. Now the second biggest mistake I see people very often make, check out this guy, he's also super focused on me being a giant ball of heat signature. Heat signature, it was like, oh, you know, anyway. Please, this is serious. As I was saying, so the second biggest mistake I see guys making is not making the clear differentiation of keeping an animal humid versus keeping an animal wet. This is a very, 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 very big mistake that especially atheist keepers make worldwide. So what is the difference between keeping an animal wet and humid? So if you take a look at your enclosure and you don't have adequate ventilation, I mean, I'm going to show you guys her tub over here for this beautiful, beautiful Schlegeli female. Look at that tub and look at the amount of cross flow and ventilation that is available in this enclosure. So if you don't have adequate ventilation in your enclosure, your animal will constantly be soaked. And that'll basically mean your animal is wet and not humid. And that is one of the most common, common, common reasons for tropical species of snakes to actually get respiratory infection. So how do you actually simulate adequate humidity for a snake? So as I just lent you just about it, you have to make sure that there's adequate amount of ventilation. You have to adjust your amount of misting in accordance with the amount of ventilation you actually have available for the species. Say for example, the Imahagus. They really, really like a boggy environment, but they don't necessarily have to be in a low ventilated environment. So ventilating it just ensures that there's no bad bacterial buildup and that they actually remain healthy in that very human environment. All right, now the third biggest mistake that I see people keeping vipers make is giving them zero visual barriers when they actually have them on display. So if, you're, if your animal's old enough and if you see that the stress levels are in turn and the animal doesn't mind being seen too often, you have to ensure that there still are visual barriers inside the enclosures because they always need that place to escape to when they feel that being seen is a little bit too much. So having visual barriers is really important, especially if you are extremely active in your collection. So if you actively come into your snake room on a daily basis, often, well, more often than once, it is very important for you to have visual barriers. Let's take, for example, this little tiny little Chinese banded cobra that I have. If I'm too active around his enclosure, or if I'm too active in my room, he actually goes all feed for a while, then he stops eating. So that's why visual barriers are important, because since I did put them in, he's actually consistently eating even with me in the room. Now oftentimes, than not, well more often than not, people actually stress their animals out by prying too much as well. So let's take for example this Himahabu female. She's heavily, heavily grabbing, and me wanting to obviously check on her on a daily basis because I'm so excited for her to have babies, it's actually a bad thing. So I forced myself to check on her only on a weekly basis. And that's when I check if her water bowl's full, if her humidity is adequate, and if she isn't potentially hungry. Now the fourth point I wanna make that I see people do on a, oh, this is the scariest part for me, is people keep their vipers too warm. All right, now I'm taking out the Shlegeli female again, if she would allow me. <laughs> So people are keeping their vipers too warm. These guys do not do good with extremely hot temperatures. They do perfectly fine with a 25 degree ambient. 
So what will be seen as too warm? What will be seen as too warm is when the temperatures exceed what their natural environment would be. So let's take for example that shligeri that I showed you guys. Like I said, she will not do fine at all with a 31 degree hotspot. That is just far too warm. She needs to have a 28 to 20, a 27 to 28 degree hotspot because colder temperatures have proven to have a better lifespan effect on all things arboreal viper, including higher up African species like the squams. The fifth and the most important thing that I see people do is they feed their vipers too often. Now, if you guys have a look at this female Gumprek viper, she's already a bit on the chunky side, which is telling me I should lean out her diet. Now, she already only eats once every third week. For a lot of you guys, you might be shocked by me saying that, but that is actually how often these guys eat. Remember, these guys are all ambush predators. They sit and wait two, three weeks on end at a singular spot, just waiting, hoping for a prey item to come by. So paired with feeding too much is feeding too large meals, especially when it comes to males. Take for example this Gumprecht Viper male. As you guys saw, that female is way bigger than him and they're the exact same age. Because males, you actually want to be a tad bit more on the leaner side than your females. Because a lean, healthy male is a male that's actually going to breed. So what is this thing that you can incorporate when you have a boil of vipers? And that would be variety. You guys will not understand how rewarding it is to actually add variety to your vipers meals. Now what would be seen as a good variety meal? It would be quails, chicks, chicken pots, chicken hearts. I've even been hearing people feeding fish as an added variety. And I think that's awesome that people are going to the extent of adding variety to their vipers diet. It adds to their vibrance, it adds to their health, it adds to their breeding capability, and always a phenomenal way to stimulate their wild behavior and to keep them entertained inside of their enclosures. So obviously there's still a thousand more tips I can give you guys in regards to what you should do, how you should do with vipers. But I really want to fixate on that point. Wow, she's really powerful. She's actually holding my neck like that. No, no, yeah, she's really, 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 really. Damn. <laughs> Let me take a look my neck. Interesting thing, tumor boas are pound for pound the strongest snakes that are out there. They're incredibly powerful, but completely non-relevant to this video. So as I was saying, there's still a thousand things I can teach you guys about what to do, how to do, and where to do with your royal vipers. But one thing I really want you guys to try and fixate on if you take it from this video is adding variety to your vipers diet.